So lots of people have a bucket list, but how many of you actually go out and achieve it? Well, one woman is proving that it can be done, and get this, it's not even her list. Laura Carney decided to complete her dad's bucket list after she lost him unexpectedly in 2016. There were more than 50 items on the list, and it took her six years to complete. She's now written a book about her extraordinary journey. Please welcome Laura to DBS. Yeah, Laura. Wow. Hi, Laura. Hi. Hi, Hi. thanks for having me. Absolutely, we're very grateful to have you. It's a great idea. I wanted to know, your dad's bucket list was found after he died, and I wanted to know, did you know he even had a bucket list? No, um, he died in a crash with a distracted driver in 2003, so and my brother had it for 13 years. Um, it showed up, he found it because he was moving into his first house, and he was about to get married, and I had just gotten married myself, so I've always viewed it as my dad's wedding gift. So Laura, listen. When I when I first heard the story, I'm like, I could totally see this on Netflix, Disney Plus, one of those. Like, this is such a great show idea. So I'm glad you're doing something with it. What were some of the things on the list, and what had he completed that was on that list? Um, he, I mean, it just really ran the gamut of ideas. He was really a big ideas man, so we weren't shocked <laughs> when we when we saw that. But it was like grow a watermelon, uh, talk with the president, um, correspond with the pope, um, have my own tennis court. Uh, run 10 miles straight, uh, swim the width of a river. He was he was a writer, so he was very poetic. Wow. <laughs> Did you say grill a watermelon? No, grow. grow. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to try that. I'm putting that on my bucket yeah, list. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> to try it. Delicious. Okay, so I want to do a top three um, in different categories. So I'm going to start with your favorite thing that you completed on the bucket list. I have to say it's a tie. Um, one of them was uh, help my spouse feel uh, happy, healthy, pretty, and young every day of her life, which was meant for my mother, but I applied that to my husband. Oh, wow. um, and we had just gotten married, and this whole experience has just really strengthened us and helped mm. him to know his father-in-law. He only yeah. he just met him five days before he died. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, the other one, a little more selfish, um, I got to spend two weeks in Vienna and Berlin by myself. <laughs> Nice. And that wow. was just incredible. Um, I was a little nervous about it. It was the first time, you know, I'd done solo travel, much less in Europe. But boy, what a what an incredible experience, especially with you know the pandemic. Right. Wow. Okay. What was the scariest thing? Skydiving. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I always imagine. think it's funny that he wrote skydive at least once. You know, like he was going to do it a few times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he was 29 years old when he wrote it. So oh. that's definitely a young man's dream. Um, and, you know, it's a life changing thing. I When I was up there, I'm such a perfectionist, or at least I was. I'm definitely not now. Uh, but uh, I, I saw the little parachute hanging out of the tandem jumper's backpack. And I was like, is that supposed to be like that? Oh <laughs> you know, like, gosh. I'm going to save myself. But I heard a voice say, let go. Wow. And just. <sighs> Having, if you haven't done it, I really recommend it because it just changes the way you see everything. Mm, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I appreciate that you did. And I also love that you talked about that voice because they're always with us. Okay, this is going to be very relative, but what was your least favorite? Tennis. Yeah, I hate to say that after you just had Serena on. She's my favorite. <laughs> and we even saw her in the U.S. Open as part of my research. But... <laughs> Uh, yeah, first day on the court, I tore a tendon in my foot and I had to get surgery. And, you know, it was a low moment because, uh, you know, there's elements of having a dad who's a dreamer that can be a little scary, too. Like, maybe mm. this was a mistake. Am I becoming like him in bad ways? But in that moment, uh, you know, other stuff was going on that was a little bit scary. And I just decided I don't care what happens with this list. I'm going to finish it. Wow. It was really important that I reached that moment. So and I, I it was good, too. I can only imagine you've learned a lot about yourself. What have you learned about yourself throughout this entire experience? Um, you know, in, in learning things about my dad and understanding him better, it's helped me to see those traits in me that I might have hidden in some ways or thought, well, like this, I feel a little different from other people because I'm creative, you know, or I have ADD and I just thought, you know, I'm supposed to try to be like everyone else. But I mean, God, like what person could do a project like this unless they had ADD, you yeah. know, right? <laughs> like it was a Uniquely strength. Uniquely suited. I yeah. love it. Well, Laura, thank you so much. DBL Nation, make sure that you get so Laura's cool. book. It's going to be released this spring you can visit her website for more information also follow her at uh, on instagram at my father's list thank That's you amazing. so much laura we'll be right back oh, thank, you. Thank, thank you for having me